When I first heard of distance education, I learned about the difference between synchronous and asynchronous learning. Synchronous means everyone is in the same place at the same time for at least some activities, even if that space is a virtual space. Asynchronous is the opposite of that. Increasingly, though, I have students in my distance courses who expect kind of a blend of the two. So I decided to ask my colleague, Brittany Stevenson, if she'd let me observe her using Wimba, a synchronous chat um, application, and if she would help me understand why synchronous chat is, to her mind, a really good idea. That's okay. Here we go. Brittany, <laughs> why do you think it's so important in an online class to have synchronous chat like you just had in the Wimba classroom? I think um, the synchronous chat helps students uh, feel connected to the class, feel connected to each other, feel connected to me as an instructor. Um, I think sometimes online classes students can feel like they're just kind of out there on their own floating. Um, and so having a, a sense of teacher presence, whether you're doing it synchro synchronously or asynchronously, having that strong sense of teacher presence um, really helps in an online class. And a synchronous chat, of course, is a way um, to really have that presence where you're interacting with the students, where you're engaging with the students. So tell me what you do to prepare to have a successful uh, Wimba session with your students. Um, with Wimba, you have uh, this course content frame where you can put different uh, material up there. You can put PowerPoint slides up there. You can put um, websites up there, links to different things. Uh, you can put uh, questionnaires or um, multiple choice questions that you can create right in Wimba that go up on that course content frame. And that course content frame is one of the sort of key features of, of uh, Wimba because it's what everyone is focusing their attention on. Um, so to prepare for a chat, um, I will usually make some kind of a PowerPoint presentation um, so that, you know, that, that looks at the readings that we were talking about or, um, you know, comments on discussions we've been having or something. So I'll upload the PowerPoint presentation. Um, often I'll use um, different websites, like today we were practicing rhetorical analysis as they're preparing to write their own um, of political cartoons. So I had put up several um, web links to examples of political cartoons for us to talk about. Um, I also like to start a chat with um, a questionnaire that the students respond to, um, and I'll ask them a question, um, for example, um, what do you think makes a peer review group successful? And then they would each respond to that question, and then I can immediately post um, those results, and it creates like a chart that has the student's name and their response, and it's a good way to get the students thinking and talking at the beginning, um, and then I will have them comment on each other and respond to each other. Um, so I'll take the time to create um, those questionnaires or whatever it is that I want to put up there. Um, also, um, I frequently use um, small groups discussions in WIMPA um, where you um, can use breakout rooms and divide the students into groups of three or four students and particularly as we move forward in the semester and do more peer review and more revision, um, I'll put the students in small groups and um, have them read each other's work and talk about it. And so the preparation for that is actually um, can be a little more complicated because I have to form student groups ahead of time and let them know who's in their group and whose papers they should read before the chat so that when they get to the chat they're ready to start talking about the papers. Um, so sometimes I'll take a time during um, one chat to form the groups and then you know tell them to read those people's papers before the next week and get that set up for them, give them some structure for that. Um, the other thing I was going to mention about the course content frame is you can also use it like a, like a whiteboard and so you can put it on um, the, the tool that allows you to type or draw something. So sometimes when we're having discussions, um, I'll turn my microphone off and let the students respond to their questions and then I'll like type a list of what they're saying just like you would um, in an on-campus classroom recording the main ideas that are coming from a discussion on the whiteboard.